All right. Well, speaking of potential tops, um, something I've been talking about before, and I think I'm going to keep harping on until it happens. I'm going to pull a Peter Schiff and always predict the end of the world um, because I'll be right eventually. And that is, and my heart goes out to Peter Schiff because I used to love the guy as he supported the Ron Paul for president. And then he's he controversial. <laughs> well, he went off, you know, once you get started getting views for, for screaming into a microphone, you stop not screaming into the microphone. Uh, so that's what bothers me about him. But the, um, the inflation story. So we've been really, as far as I, I'm looking at it, we've been following the inflation story of the of the 70s. I'm not the first one to say that, obviously. But, um, in, you know, inflation had come rocketing down to 1% or you know, 0% as uh, some people were, were predicting. We're still fairly fairly high even though it's coming down and the the thing that's been worried, worrying me is the central banks who have started cutting the easing that's happening in the markets so uh before we jump into talking about that let me just play this uh, another clip from the same video from drunken miller who talks about the fed policy of cutting 50 basis points recently listen does this mean that you thought 50 basis points was an absolute mistake. And do you think that there is a risk of an inflationary spike in the way we saw in the 1970s? Yeah, do you have the, the chart we talked about earlier? Let's see if we can pull that up. There's certainly one that investors have been looking at. And while you- So even if we don't have the chart, so in the 1970s, inflation came down from a remarkably similar level to where it was in 21. I think 21 peaked at nine. I think it was eight back in the 70s. They came down to three. The Fed was easing because they, they had the 75 recession. So the Fed started easing and inflation went right back up to, I think it peaked at a 12% when Volcker came in and smashed it. I'm not predicting that, but when you're easing into a melt up in financial markets and we have the fiscal policy we have going forward, it's certainly a risk and I just, I think it's a mistake not to be taking that risk into account. I don't really understand the rush of 50 basis points, and then I think that markets have priced in a 97% cut uh, at the next meeting. That's all through Fed guidance. It's funny, my, my friend Jim Grant, who's one of my favorite writers, said they're not really data dependent, they're forward guidance dependent. And that's what they're showing again. And look, he might be right, and I hope he is right, but it's a big risk because if, in fact, they're wrong and inflation takes off because monetary policy is, in fact, not restrictive and we have fiscal expansion going on and they have to tighten again, I think it could be a, it could be a nightmare for markets and maybe even for the independence of the Fed. You can't, you can't make multiple mistakes that the, that, that would have been. But I'm not predicting it. I'm just saying, why did they go 50 and why do they need this forward guidance? So yeah, the the that question of the fifty basis point cut, that's a thing that um, that worries me here because there seems to have been no reason to go beyond the normal twenty five basis point cut, and so I don't think that the 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 Federal Reserve and the central banks around the world are um, clueless. I don't think they're they're dumb or guessing. Um, in fact, if they were being overly cautious and they just wanted to play to what people were thinking, they would have just did 25 basis points. It seems to me that they're actually seeing a weakness, uh, a problem within the economy and that um, they want to pump in liquidity now, but they want to do it fast enough in order to get that soft landing. But not so long that people really start questioning, hey, what about this inflation thing? Like, are you guys going to cause, cause inflation if they do 25 basis points, 25 basis points just continuously? So they, they did 50 basis points. They floated the idea that they might not even do another one, right? Um, even though the, the the markets are saying that, you know, it's near a guarantee that the next uh, meeting they're going to cut 25 basis points. And it makes you wonder, what's that liquidity injection within the markets going to do for inflation come a year from now? And if we're starting off, we're not starting off off the lows of 0%. We're going to start off the lows of, what is it, uh, 3 then are we going to see 12% interest rates um, in the next uh, couple of years? That's what worries me. Yeah, fair. I think, uh, I think maybe one thing to observe is that there's really three decisions that the Fed can make here. It's either raise interest rates, pause interest rates, or cut interest rates. And I think it's possible that we have to leave open that uh, small uh, probability that they just pause if the data that they're being guided by shows that there's any kind of uptick in inflation, right? 
So if if the if the data uh, guides them towards remaining at a pause, I think maybe the one thing I keep reminding myself of is that five percent Fed funds rate is still fairly high. I mean that's still enough to abate inflation and keep cost of capital high enough that should curb some of that consumption energy that's happening within the economy. The, the, the idea of maybe continuing as a pause could be the thing that allows them the room to keep inflation concerns under control instead of just continually dropping from here. Maybe the assumption is that the futures market is correct and that they do continue to uh, pull back interest rates and that does see a return in inflation, perhaps I can see I can see it going that way. But so far, it seems like the Fed has done a pretty damn good job. So what do you think about this here? So this is the chart of gold. And it, it might as well be the chart of some uh, of Solana, some crypto asset. Um, the chart of gold is the is a proxy for the debasement of the currency, which you know that's a quantitative easiness. That's what the the central banks do to debase the currency, and the um, the concerns of the fiscal of the uh, the financial markets. When there's concerns in the financial markets, sovereign entities and central banks um, they purchase gold, right? The gold does not go parabolic like this because you, know, you or me are buying five thousand dollars worth of uh, of gold on the market. That's how, that's not what moves this. This moves because China decides they need $500, $500 billion worth of, uh, of gold and they're collecting it over a period of years. To add to that, the longer or the, the, the medium term and long term yields in the treasury markets are also increasing. And that's also a sign that the market is anticipating an inflation increase. Correct. So I, I think you're right. There's, there's a couple of signals here that are pointing to some anticipation that inflation will return. That's right. So we have here um, on the bond market, all the... Um, all the tenors are increasing. So this is after the Fed cut 50 basis points, where we're seeing potentially a, a, a bottoming and a rise of, uh, of uh, interest rates. Now, does it roll over? That's what we that's what we have to see. Right. But the the idea here is that maybe the central banks around the world are seeing a potential issue with. Um, a potential issue that's happening, this bubble in the service that they're trying to get ahead of. And they're also aware that this is what they're doing is going to cause an inflationary spike. And so do it as quickly as possible, as fast as possible. And while, while talking like everything is hunky dory. And the thing that bothers me is that um, it's so funny as a Canadian, I spent so much time looking at the, uh, the American market, especially the, the consumer. Um, the consumer has more jobs per person. Yet the spending of the consumer is not diminishing. It's this weird thing where American consumer they don't diminish their spend. They're like, no, I'm getting the third job because I need to maintain my spending levels. They're not actually decreasing some of the disc discretionary spending. So it's one of those things where the American consumer gets to a cliff and then jumps off. They don't ease themselves. They know, you know what, things are going bad. Let's pull back. Let's control the deficit. Let's do all this stuff and be responsible. I've never heard an American politician or consumer say that since um, since 2001. And so I feel like I can't look at what's going on with the American consumer to really get a sense of if there's danger. Meanwhile, that's what that's what the Fed talks about. The Fed talks about the labor market. The Fed talks about the consumer, even though their spending habits, to me, is a little bit kooky. Whereas you look at what's going on in China, you look at what's going on in in Europe, and you're like, no, these are recessionary signals. These are problematic signals within the, the financial space. And so, look, I don't think that tomorrow the stock market falls or anything like that. I just think that when it does, it's not some gradual you know, lower high, lower high. And then I think it's like, whoop, and then off a cliff COVID style. That's going to look really bad for the Fed. I think basically what you're saying is that a mistake will occur and it won't happen in a slow enough fashion. It will occur because a report comes in and we suddenly realize, whoops, that, that didn't happen the way we expected. Exactly. And the market goes great and it tanks and it's a, it's a heyday for, uh, for everybody trying to win on the Nvidia play right now. <laughs> That's right. And so to me, like, um, I look at that and I guess I'm cynical now, not cynical, but I guess I have a different mentality. I go, well, how do I protect my family? Why do I pr protect my family is I take advantage of volatility events like that, make bets accordingly, make my money so that I'm not the guy 
at the food bank trying to uh, to make ends meet, right? That's the way I think about it. Help help me help the uh, people who are watching so that we pay attention so that we don't walk off the cliff without realizing that the cliff is coming. That's literally like the only reason I like to to talk about the inflation thing um, and to bring up the spirit of Peter Schiff. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, that's my uh, inflation scare for the week. I'll, I'll have more next week. I promise you that, especially if other big wigs like Drucken Miller comes out and say, hey, what's going on with this 50 basis point cut? But I um, do think it's worth keeping an eye on. But unfortunately, it's one of those things where it's like the Fed gets the data before we do. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what the next decision yields. So we got just just for those watching here, we have two more events uh, until the end of the year, um, we have the November 7th meeting and the December 8th, 18th meeting. And right now the futures market is expecting a 20, 25 basis point cut, uh, with a 94% probability in November and a 76% probability of another 25 basis point cut in on the 18th of December. So it's that second one that makes me kind of interested, right? So like maybe we see one more one more uh, rate cut in November, but there, I want to leave open this idea that they could try to protract, protract this period of keeping the rates paused until they know for sure that they've locked in inflation at their, their target rate. So the thing that I pay attention to, like um, it's not, I think you even said this at the beginning, it's not the rate cut itself that I care about. It's that they're cutting, right? Their whole thing is forward guidance. Um, Jokin Miller in that interview goes on to talk more about like, it's it's forward guidance that they're really doing. And the cut is trying to signal to the markets, hey, we think things are going to go uh, well. If things go badly, then we'll do something in order to, to put a bottom in the market. So go ahead and take risk accordingly because we'll be there with the, the Fed put. That's what the cutting of the, the rates is signaling, that they want to support the economy. And so the it's, it's causing more money to come into the market causing the assets to go up. I mean, we're seeing markets all over the place um, get higher and higher. In a second, we'll take a look. I'll, I'll actually ask you to pull up the uh, the chart for Bitcoin uh, to take a look at it. But then we had this wealth, wealth effect, and we have then people making decisions based on their, their larger uh, value of their portfolios. And when there's a market correction and it drops 30% all of a sudden, and someone looks at their portfolio and the money that they thought they had is now down by 30%, ah, now user behavior starts to starts to change. Um, so the it's the it's that they're cutting. And not so to me that matters, and not so much like what they cut and, and when they cut it. Fair enough. We'll see. <laughs>